Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Uh, what can I say good about Dubby? I mean, I've been drinking Dubby for about a year now. Uh, I, I buy the tubs, and the tubs are just delicious. Uh, you just mix it in with a little bit of water, shake it up, and it's good to go. Um, and honestly, like I don't feel any sugar crashes or anything after drinking Dubby, and it makes me feel like really energetic and ready to go. Perfect for this haunt season, especially. Uh, so I'm going to be drinking a ton of Dubby this haunt season to keep me motivated, keep me going. But great people at Dubby gave me a coupon code to share with you guys, 10% off. When you use code Knights of Horror at checkout, so go check out W and it's many, many positive reviews, over fifteen thousand positive reviews of W Energy. So don't take my word for it. Go read what other people had to say. W Energy and use code Knights of Horror at checkout for ten percent off your order. Enjoy the show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Strange and Unusual Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Anthony. With me, the lovely Hayes. How you doing today? I'm good. So, wanted to come on, talk to you about a few things. Um, for one, what's coming up this haunt season? There's a lot coming up this haunt season, especially after the weekend we had at Midsummer Scream that was announced, uh, and our experience at Zoe Reborn, the extreme escape room located in Fullerton, California, by Escapade Games. And with us is Rhea Ripper. How you doing, Rhea? You guys can't see, but she's sniffing the microphone right now. She doesn't know what that is. So, a lot to talk about. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Well, you mentioned Rhea, so my cat bought, brought me a kitten. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a kitten. Indeed. And she's great, and my dogs are are great. So we got that. But um, I don't know if you want to talk Haunt Hype or Zoe Reborn Hype. Because, I mean, both of them are pretty much just like... Let's start with Haunt Hype, and then we'll go into Zoe, because... Uh... There's been a lot of Zoe coverage on the channel this week. We've had uh, the podcast with the creator and owner of Zoe Reborn uh, to get a little insight of how that was made. And then we had, of course, the reactions of our security cam footage that was generously sent over to us. So that was a lot of fun. Um, And I hope everyone got a good laugh from that. Bria is currently uh, mesmerized by everything on the bed. Yeah. We are... Uh, a very new situation for her. Yeah, very new. So she's going to be curious. Just hope she doesn't bite anything. But uh, we're keeping a close eye on her. She's looking like she's just kind of over it now. But anyway, um, yeah, they were very generous to send us over our security footage of some of the funniest moments uh, throughout that. And we shared that on the channel. I do apologize for the audio. Uh, the audio is just standard with their security cameras it's not really meant for you guys to hear it's just meant for them to keep an eye on the uh, games at all time so yeah that was a lot of fun to uh, watch you and i watched that on uh, saturday night and we were just laughing um so hard there was a couple moments we wish would would have been in there but then we kind of realized that would be giving away the game a little too much so i'm like i'm glad they put in the moments they did because uh, I still think those were a lot of funny moments. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Uh, you were having a ball, but yeah, you know, I, did. Right. I was uh, was terrified. I was having an amazing time. Yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show, so stick around for that to hear our full experience. We talked a little bit on Nights of Horror Radio. I gave you guys one story, but we're going to break down the full experience without giving away spoilers, just kind of our reactions, our thought process, and uh, how we got through the game. So that should be a lot of fun. But I want to start, I think, with, uh, you know, this, we'll start from the smallest up. Um, for one, Castle Dark, congratulations to them for having a panel this season. I didn't get to uh, watch it yet. I've been so busy editing and releasing the content for everyone else so they can enjoy it that uh, I have not gotten an opportunity to watch it yet. So I don't know what they announced. But Rob did talk a little bit about it on Nights of Horror Radio when we had him on last week. So big shout out to Rob for uh, attending the panel. Big congratulations to Castle Dark this weekend, though, for having a uh, panel 
Yeah. Ever, first time ever. So uh, I want to try to go check that one out this year. Small little uh, theme park out in Riverside, usually about three, four mazes, but it's a fun time. You know, I mean, you can't go wrong with the haunt scene, right? There's always some fun we can find in it. No, I've heard a lot about them, seen a lot of pictures. You know, I would love to go. So. Another haunt for you to experience. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So Castle Dark, we're going to try to hit you guys up this this year for sure. Uh, let's we'll try to get out there. Um, you know, I'm all about spooky season. So. Oh, oh, uh oh. <laughs> She's stepping on the keyboard. Usually, when something happens with the keyboard, uh, could stop the recording or something. So thank God Rhea didn't do that yet. But now <laughs> I got her on the the watch. She's like, but I want to want to be involved. Um, I would say the next thing of smallest news would I would have to say would be not scary farm. Uh, although they came in with a lot of cool behind the scenes of what it takes to put on the event every single year. The only thing they really announced uh, was that Waxworks is going to be going on its last year, uh, which we just put up a TikTok this past weekend uh, of Waxworks, a walkthrough that uh, Hayes is now in charge of all of Knights of Horse TikToks. So anything you see on the Knights of Horse... not all, but... Well, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. I'll still throw in... <laughs> I'll come through and edit some every now and then, too. But uh, she's going to be helping us over there on TikTok a lot. So if you see a lot of those videos... Uh, Show some love to Hayes. Go follow her on her channel, too. She's grinding out content every single year. About about to get ready to film a lot more. Yeah, for, I think I know. still have about 30 in the queue. But, you know, haunt season is fastly approaching, so I need to get those out of the queue hey, before I'm, I'm back at, like, 200 in my queue. Yeah. Cause, and it lasts her all year long, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. If you follow her on TikTok, she's been posting haunt-related things all year long from... 2023 kind of keep you guys excited going into 2024 and then yeah. you get to eventually see her 2024 content roll out so it should be a lot of fun she grinds just as hard as we do over here yeah i try to keep stuff going you know and try to give the monsters a little extra shine oh yeah i appreciate that they appreciate that uh but yeah so now it's waxworks final year that's it. Hanging we need it up. knots to bring back the uh, behind the fog tour. Yeah, and if they want to show us all this behind the behind the scenes stuff, just bring yeah. back the behind the fog tour. We're yeah. happy to pay for it. That was a lot of fun, <laughs> uh, especially with mazes like Chilling Chambers, Cinema Slasher. I'd yeah, love that would to be see great to go through those and just to see where they'll be. Especially Ch Chilling Chambers, even alone. if they were to do the ones that. You know, the mazes that they're going to retire this year, it would still be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I think... I mean, they I mean, we, obviously we got announced to... Waxworks, but, you know, yeah. usually it's like two that are going to go, so what else is going to go this year? And I remember when we did our Behind the Fog tour, we actually got to go through Waxworks. Yeah, Check that did. out. That was cool. We went through Waxworks Origins and Dark Ride, yep. um, which was really cool. I really liked going through so, Dark Ride. Yeah, Dark Ride was a lot of fun Closing to Closing out through. that year, though. Yeah, so I'm glad we got to see a little behind the scenes <clears> and Origins... It's just fun to go through too, you know. That yeah, was definitely. Like, that was like before Chilling Chambers, so like that was the Easter egg maze, and now Chilling Chambers is out. Now I'm like, can you, can you bring it back just for Chilling <laughs> Chambers at least? Um. So yeah, now it's please if if you can bring if back the behind. If you're listening, <laughs> bring back the behind the fog tour. That was a lot of fun, and uh, I uh, I definitely want to see that again. Uh, also, they announced that their uh, announcement event is going to be taking place. Uh, I. I think it was August 20, anywhere from the 25th to the 27th. It's a Thursday. I know that yeah. much. Um, I don't think we're going to be attending. However, Sammy is talking about doing a live stream. And then I know I'll be at work. So maybe I'll just join on and you'll just hear my voice and I'll just try to listen to what's going on the best I can. But I'm going to really rely on, you know, Sammy to maybe throw me at what's going on. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out yeah, yet. Maybe what time, depending on what time it is, maybe maybe Sammy and I can jump on, do a thing. Yeah, a little, little Zoom live stream, and then I'll jump in there, and we can all talk about it. Yeah, that'd be cool. You guys could be my eyes and in ears, and I'll just throw in my commentary. Yeah, because Thursdays are getting harder now. You know, I try not yeah. to ask so much from my, from my work. You know, yeah, they they're very. Uh, yeah, I I definitely won't be able to make it out there. <laughs> I think I think last year they did it a little bit earlier. To the point where I was still working day shift, so I could make it. Because I remember... I don't remember how we pulled it off last year, but yeah, we I, did pull it off last year. Did I do a half day, maybe? I don't no, remember. I don't remember what I did. But yeah, it was... Uh, we pulled it off last year. Um, I think the biggest upset for me was having to wait 
that long ass line just to get into the tribute store. So we didn't really get to do much. Yeah. Last year was not thoroughly thought out. on yeah. our end I, either. Think we just, I think we were just so <laughs> we were, hyped to go to that yeah. tribute store that we were just like, fuck everything else. We want to see tribute stores. And I thought I wanted some items that when I seen them in person, I kind of was like upset. Yeah. Yeah. And then they actually were sold out anyways. So yeah, it worked but out. <laughs> in the end, uh, you know, we did, we, we had the fun that we did there. The announcements we did get were cool. The, Scareopoly. We got Scareopoly. I think we, we got a we got a lantern. Yeah, people. still sealed. So uh, I'm gonna be. Well, I don't know if it's. I mean, I think you and I can do a little game, um, and then maybe we can invite Rob or somebody. But like, as far as characters go, I, I think it's gonna start being busy for them. So I'm gonna have to wait till after season now to do it. But I do want to do that still. I just I don't know how long it's gonna take. I don't know how long it's gonna be to film. I've even thought about like opening up like a Zoom call. And pointing a camera down at the board so they can all see it and still kind of play, but I like run everything for them and then we ask and questions. And we got the dragon. And we got the dragon. So there you go. Put that as the centerpiece. No, it's a dice roller. Oh, is it? Yeah. For Dungeons and Dragons, though, isn't it? What? For Dungeons and Dragons, though, no. I don't know. That's I, usually I, what that would go with. I've acquired it <laughs> and it's awesome. It so. is awesome. So I didn't know that's what that was. I thought it was just like a fossil, like a no. statue. <laughs> there, there's dice inside of it. That's cool. Yeah. Alrighty. The more you know. So yeah, Knots coming in with some heat. Let's see what they announce in a few weeks at their announcement event. Yeah. Um, looking forward. There should be two brand new mazes getting announced, hopefully, uh, and maybe another maze getting announced as the final year. Who knows? Some new shows. Can't wait to see what they do with the hanging. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, the thing they didn't announce that was coming back. Yeah, the so hang's the coming, hang back, coming again. back. Yeah, they had a lot of fun That's doing good. it last year. So, you know you me, know. I'm not for the cancel culture. So, yeah, I don't think both of us are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's see where we want to go from here. Still, Los Angeles or uh, 13th Floor Entertainment with the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, the Magic of Jack O' Lanterns, the. Uh, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, and of course, Delusion. The Red Castle is the theme this year. We got to do Delusion last year. Delusion uh, was a lot of fun. Yeah, in November, yeah. we got to do it. Uh, and that was like the last thing we got to do during haunt season because like that was the, the last thing that was staying open the latest. Yeah. And uh, I had expressed to Hayes how, how I've never been to Delusion, how I've always wanted to go to Delusion. I just never wanted to go alone, so we pulled <laughs> we pulled the trigger that last year, and we yeah. As uh, soon as the tickets went on sale, I got on there and I bought them. We got the tickets to Delusion, and uh, we got to see the final year at the Pomona location at the old kind of Victorian mansion yeah, it was house. Really cool. Yeah, and and it's funny. I always tell people, I'm like, you know, you walk up to this this creepy ass mansion, right? And that's not even the experience. That first mansion was just the fucking pre show, like that was just the waiting area. Yeah. Your real experience don't start until you go to the side and then you did the whole back mansion. That's the actual experience. Like they did such a good job of like really kind of keeping you entertained while you were waiting for your time slot. And uh, I really enjoyed so what speak, they did. Starting the immersion. Yeah, it was a, it was a good, good thing. And then if you had the VIP ticket, you had a secret bar in the very back of that old house uh, where the actual, most of the experience was, and not only that, did you have uh, there was an interactive portion? Yeah, you had an opportunity to be uh, one of the monsters or zombies in the maze, and uh, we actually got to see that from both sides as far as what it looked like from doing it from just like a guest monster, and then what it looked like coming through as um, guest. And it looked really cool to to kind of see all that tying together. That was a really cool experience. But the Red Castle sounds pretty good, nineteen forties, nineteen fifties era. Yeah, let's uh, see if we can't get tickets. Yeah, we're going to get try to get tickets to that again. Um, definitely looking forward to another year of delusion. Uh, LA Haunted Hayride, uh, 80% of Trick or Treat is going to be changing, and they are bringing back oh, wow. the doorbells. So you can actually ring the doorbells. I've never experienced the doorbells. Yeah, so. that's something that I think you would really like to do, because I know how cool. much you like to push buttons. I hope they're turning up the lighting just a tad bit, because, you know, last yeah. year was very dark. Yeah, very dark. Very dark. Um, I know they're doing a re uh, another chapter of Midnight Mortuary. They're going to be updating that again. That's their fan nice. favorite there. Uh, they're adding some new stuff in the Hayride, such as look like a town hall kind of area, which is really cool. Monty Revolta is coming back to do another another concert session. Um, this is like his town. Yeah, he's the mayor. Yeah. Um, and the big news 
I think out of all that is finally we get to ride the carousel. The working carousel. They are reskinning it. They are repainting it, giving it brand new looks, updating it, fixing all the parts. After all these years, since 2019, since I've seen it, it's been dead. Now it's finally coming to life. Something I'm definitely gonna try to get you to get on. So get some. Good oh yeah, footage. I'll get on it. You going in a circle? It'd be great if I can go in costume, but you know that. Yeah, that would probably not be accepted. Probably, yeah, they're probably gonna be like, no, need yeah. to go do change in the car. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Hall- uh Eliana Hayride is always a fun time. Um and special shout out to 134 Entertainment at that panel, uh hooking it up with some free tickets. So Hayes and I grabbed our free tickets yes. uh, for both not only Eliana Hayride. Where is the magic of the jack o' lanterns going to be cuz But the magic of the jack o' lanterns yeah. and I think it's also somewhere in the LA area. We're going to have to do some research on that and see uh Yeah, I wonder if it's still going to be all the way out there by what was that uh Selmar last year? It was all so. the way. I know it was pretty far. Yeah. Regardless, we got a free ticket to it. So, yeah. like, if it's close by, we'll check it out. If it's pretty far, then understand that. Uh, yeah. Gas is expensive in California. <laughs> um, it very much is. So yeah, we're I mean, gonna try our best. We could still make it out there, but we will see. So the game plan this season, as far as me goes, is like I want to really try to hit everything. You know, if it's if there's multiple things opening one week, I want to try to hit everything once at least. Yeah, that would be awesome. I feel like last year that I we dropped the ball and we missed out on like on the thirtieth anniversary of Six Flags and I mean Six Flags is a drive, but at the same time, like yeah. you know, I think this year is gonna be a lot of fun with the whole extreme concept of them bringing all these IPs in. So uh, I can't wait to see what that looks like. Uh, obviously we're gonna be going to Dark Harbor. That's yes, a get that's, that's a must. We already got our tickets for that. And then uh, you know, we're gonna be going to Knots. We got our passes for that as well. Uh, we'll be going to Halloween Horror Nights. Um, you know, we're gonna do, try to hit all these haunts. Uh, Fear Farm is coming down to Corona this year. So yeah, I want to check them out. Yeah, we don't have to drive like super far. I mean, again, California gas prices not the best, no. and traffic in California even worse. So uh, I'm so I'm so excited to finally get to check out Fear Farm. Hopefully, we can get down there and check them out. Uh, hopefully, some Castle Dark. And of course, our favorite little home haunts like Drex Society. Yes. You know, we love Drex Society. We gotta go check out Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. That that was such a fun walkthrough in the Hall of Shadows. Can't wait to see what they do with more rooms and everything. That was just a little preview, but that was such a good preview. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to see that. Uh, I want to try to hit it Santa Ana Haunt, obviously. Yeah, I would love to go there too. Check them out. Yeah. I've um, never been through there. And Here's... then, of course, we're going to make some room for uh, Pinocchio Master of Puppets. Yes, definitely. When that comes out uh, at its at Scott Paid Games uh, in the Fullerton location where Zoe is located. Uh, brand new escape room, Pinocchio Master of Puppets. Uh, and Geppetto, we talked a little bit on the podcast, but, uh, you know, Geppetto is getting old and grumpy. Pinocchio is growing up, so Pinocchio goes off while Geppetto gets cranky, old, and diabolical. Now, instead of turning toys into children he is turning children into toys and keeping them forever so that sounds uh promising yeah i can imagine there's going to be a person playing geppetto and yelling at us and whatnot probably we're probably the test subjects i'm assuming so we're looking forward to that that should be a lot of fun we're going to try to do that in october as well um but yeah it, it, 13th it, floor huh so, but back to 13th floor. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Hayride's looking promising this year. So then the last thing to talk about really is Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Um, they announced Feast in that panel. Yeah. And they're doing a reimagining of Feast of where it's, um, you know, you're going through the origins of how the chef and the butcher became so diabolical. So that should be a lot of fun. Yeah. You don't like. I am so excited about Queen Mary's Dark Harbor coming back. I never lost hope. Yeah. And and it's back. So yeah. I am super excited. You know, we got to see some of those OG OG like heads of the house, so to speak. Yeah, switching gears into that yeah. Queen Mary panel, man. I mean <clears throat> such a good panel. I mean, you got the original OG captain, captain and, ring and the ringmaster, yeah. You know, that was And they awesome. were downstairs for the photo op afterward, and that was amazing to yeah. see them and interact with them once again. Yes, it was good to see the captain. Um, you know, captain said some very meaningful words to me uh, when we were, we were meeting. I know you were right there, too. But um, the captain comes up to me and says, hey, you know, I've been watching the podcast a lot lately since uh, passing the squeaks. 
you know, with all the sliders and stuff. And he goes, just want to say, man, like you have a really fucking cool show and I really love listening to it. And like that meant a lot to me because yeah. uh, Brad came on the podcast when we were doing one through COVID. So, uh, you know, that was nice for him to come on the show and, and still give fans hope, you know? So yeah, it was great to see all of them. And, and they, they fucking know how to play those roles so well. Oh yes. So well, um, uh, you know, them coming out, announcing all their stuff, all their, uh, you know, their, the, you know, the mazes, big top circus, lullabies back, um, uh, breakout, which is going to be about, um, what's the Samuel, the savage, Samuel, the savage. So that should be a little origin story. And that's, you know, that was an example of something off the ship. You know what I yeah. mean? They're kind of doing their own thing with that, but tying it into the ship. So that's really cool. Um, and then I feel like I'm missing another one. We got Feast. We got lot B340s back. A brand okay. new, uh, a brand new edition of B340 is back. Uh, more rebooted kind of origin story of B340. So that should be a lot of fun. Speaking of B340 too, they just reopened reservations to stay in B340 again at the Queen Mary. How interesting. Around, I think they start September 15th and they're going all the way through mid October, I think. So they're going to be very limited reservations. So if you can get your hands on one, good luck. Congratulations. If you can't, hopefully the next round of them <laughs> will go out. Maybe this is a test to see if how well it works, how well it looks. Well, I know they did. The, it seems to be a seasonal thing with this. They do it during like. Yeah, because this isn't the first time that I've seen the reservations open. Like you said, they're opening them back up. So, yeah, it's not the first time. I don't know. Like, like I said, maybe it's a seasonal type thing with, uh, you know, we did do a different experience with the um the gray ghost project mm -hmm. and we got to see you know a bit more of b340 than most guests would be able to so yeah. you know go back and check there. that out um yeah, on the channel but i've been you're thinking a lot about the, that yeah you're on the spirit box on that one uh oh, the estes that. yeah uh, yeah the, the radio yeah the estes session yeah so yeah, B340 yeah that was on the a lot of uh interesting interesting things during that was fun. The Grey Ghost Project. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about it, talking to my coworkers about it, and, you know, I kind of want to go back. It's almost time. Yeah. I think it is. I think we need to do a uh, Dark Harbor, Grey Ghost, maybe another stay, like a whole combo <laughs> thing oh, right weekend, there. Yeah. Huh? I think that's a good idea, actually. If we can make it work, we could try to do that. It'd be fun. I don't know if we're going to stay in B340. I don't think we can afford it. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I just we're don't good. think we can afford it. <laughs> But uh, I think uh, it might be doable. That could be a good time, you know, just to stay on the Queen, go to Dark Harbor for the night and then, yeah. you know, and just go around. And then after that next day, check out, but then still go to Dark Harbor. You know, it's like, yeah, it would be, it would make things a lot more convenient for that weekend. Yeah, be a lot of fun. Easier. Um, but yeah, Dark Harbor is looking super promising this year and they're bringing back the slider show. Yeah, so I'm very that's excited. Be cool. uh, we're going to definitely be catching that, filming you know, that for you guys, all that stuff. I expressed quite a bit of hesitation, you know. They came in, but guns yeah, they they set the fire going. Yeah, I I think and honestly that's the most hyped haunt for me this season. Yeah, same here. Like I I love knots, I love horror nights, but like Dark Harbor's back. Yeah, dude. first time since 2019. Yep, I'm excited. Extremely. It's gonna yeah. be good. It's gonna I dug be out my Dark Harbor hat. I got you know. You washed it, cleaned it, everything. Yeah, exactly. And got the shoes go. ready. I we just I got, got me a hat over the weekend. Yep. Uh, it's midsummer. Those new snapbacks with the new logo, the spirits rising. I'll be definitely wearing that opening night. Yeah, I got some shirts too. I got a long sleeve, some sh short sleeves. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got my own custom shirt that I made yes. from the for for Dark Harbor Indeed. too. So, yeah, I'm ready. Um, we gotta <laughs> find me this season a Dark Harbor patch if they sell them at the merch store. Hopefully, Dark Harbor, if you're listening, make some patches, please. I will happily put that on my vest. Yeah, and I know Hayes Mare will buy one as well. Yep, put it on my patch dress. Yeah, she loves the the queen. Yes, I uh, do. and we've been and you know we we some we, pins. You know we, we set it pins. for the last yeah some pins for sure. <laughs> uh, some Dark yeah, we Harbor. We can't pins. wait to get some some new uh, secret tokens. Yes, we're very excited tokens. for those too. So anybody that I know that's working there, you can just hand me the bag at the beginning of the day, <laughs> and then like you could send people to me, and I'll, I'll be part of your your gimmick for the night. Uh, I'm Hayes. We'll be happy to do the same <laughs> thing, make people do stuff for the tokens. Uh, we will happily be your your puppets to the puppeteer. Like it could be a lot of fun. We'll be Some part of little uh, group tours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> VIP tours, VIP maze. If you know, you know. Yeah. If you know, you know. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's going to be our own umbrella. Yeah. And, you know, you and I, <laughs> for the last two years, we, we went to Shacktober. Yeah. You know, the first year was like, all right, it was cool. It was whatever. Second year, I think we agreed much bigger improvement, just specifically for that maze on the, the ship, which yeah, was very that like was dark harbor. A lot of fun. Yeah. That, that gave us major dark harbor vibes. And that, to you and I, I think really started to spike that, spark that light again, which it never really went away. But like after going through that maze, we're like, Dark Harker, Dark Harker can come back. Yeah. This is it, right? This is the Yeah, test. I definitely never gave up hope. People, yeah, I was like, this is the test. People were, were telling me like, no, it's never going to come back. And I was like, it'll come back. It, it will And then in 2023, we day. saw the test, you know, yeah. and it worked. So I'm extremely happy. Yeah, I'm just, uh, the only thing I can pray for is, uh, I know when we went that night, right after we got out of the Grey Ghost um, yeah, no maze, leaks. It, it flooded. So let's let's try to control that. I'm hoping they fix the pipes since then. Yeah. Um. So we don't because that's guests, where the lines guests at. out there that are listening that are going to go to the queen respect the ship. Please. Yes, it's very fragile, please. very uh, experienced. I won't say old. It's experienced, very fragile, very. And they're trying piece to make repairs. So and they're yes, they're trying to repair it little by little. So try not to damage it. Yes, we know there's a lot of bars, a lot of drinking. <laughs> Drink responsibly. If you're going to throw up, don't throw up on the ship. Yeah, throw there's up. water all around it. <laughs> yeah, throw up in the water if you have to or on the parking lot. I'd much rather that than the ship. Yeah, just take care of her, you know. Yeah, just like. A lot just, of history. Yeah, World War II, man. Went to Germany and back. Went other places too, but you know, Germany gives a lot of far. love back to the city of Long Beach. Yeah, it brings them a lot of money every year, and they and they were for and Dark Harbor coming back. Home. Yes, they were for Dark Harbor coming back, so that was really cool. They were 100 percent behind you it. You know, I'm really happy to hear that a lot of monsters are also coming out of retirement, so to speak. Yeah, there's going to be some the good queen ones. is you know Dark Harbor is coming back. I'm excited to see who comes back. I mean, you know, who's to tell? You, know, I don't know who's showing up this. I don't know who's showing up this season. Like, I, 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 that's the fun part about it is like how many people are going to come back from those old days. Like, yeah, it's been since 2019. We didn't know if this was event was ever going to come back. How many people will come out of retirement just to come back for even one year? You know what I mean? Just to say they 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 were there for the return of Dark Harbor, whether that's the only year or that's I'm we're hoping that's is an ongoing thing. It seems like the new creative team is very passionate about staying to the roots of what Dark Harbor was and then and making let's it keep their own. Open for another yeah. ten years, twenty yeah. years. Keep it going, man. Let's compete it with knots. Let's compete it with Hornites. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it let's can put get it out on there. That. To me, that's part of the big four of let's get of, Carnival back on the <laughs> on, a, on a contract with yeah. the dome. You want the dome back? No, I don't care about the dome. Let's just get Slider Alley back. Yeah. <laughs> they can keep the dome. I just want Slider Alley. Yeah. Maybe they can get it. No, oh, hopefully. We'll see. Just I don't know how get packed them back on board. Yeah. I don't know how packed those things get though. Hey. Hey. <laughs> we just gotta keep it during and keep it clear during the day, right? <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean that's that's one way of looking at it. Hire a couple extra security people and make sure that nobody starts going around and messing with anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming they would take all their stuff backstage after they're done, like the rails and stuff, but I get what you mean. Barricades, Mark it out yeah. with chalk or something. Yeah. Sidewalk chalk. There you go. Yeah, Dark Harbor is going to be good, and we're looking forward to Dark Harbor this year. We're going to definitely be going out there, checking it out, and uh, I have to say it, because we are, we are as real as they come when it comes to reviewing stuff. We're going to be very harsh critics. Yeah. Like, you know, like, there's a I'm lot of things. I'm still trying to figure out how to get all my dark car- my old Dark Harbor footage up and post it on TikTok. Because I still have... A lot. Like, 2018, 2019 footage. Pictures and footage. And I never did anything with it. Because I wasn't savvy to TikTok back then. <laughs> you know what's going to be funny, too, is like you're going to see the quality difference. So the yeah. years go on, you're like, damn, dude, my new phone shoots way better than this. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be a good year. Uh, again, we are we, we will be critics about it. Um, and we are going to judge it fairly. You know, I'm going to be <laughs> honest with people like, you know, and I and I have a lot of right as of right now, I have a lot of faith in it. I do. Hi, Rhea. Rhea's jumping up. We got to yeah, be careful. Those, uh... The announcement at Midsummer was really good. So yeah, high good. hopes. High hopes. Yeah. Um, but to yeah, move on. Yeah. That was, so looking forward to that and we'll see what happens. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights came out punching this year again with the announcement of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, now, this is where it gets a little interesting. Originally, 
Six Flags was slated to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This year. This year. Oh, wow. And as of So they're their, competing head to head for well, quite a few things now, huh? Now, as of the panel last weekend, there was no mention of Texas Chainsaw Massacre whatsoever. So so what Halloween Horror Nights is doing essentially is a multiverse Texas Chainsaw Massacre maze with an original story. You're going to see all the iterations from every Leatherface out of the 50 years of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 just hit 50 this year, um, leading to the end where you're going to go back to the original film and see some scenes from there and pay homage to that 50-year legacy that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I think the idea for this maze sounds great. Now, bouncing back over to Six Flags, they were supposed to do the 2022 or 23 Netflix film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was terrible. I, I will share. I like it. some of the kills. The kills were great. I, I would say the bus scene is probably one of the best slasher See, scenes I've seen in a my while. My favorite, like, uh, part in the, in that movie was the jaw scene. Where the kid's jaw was like all jacked. Yeah. yeah. The kills were interesting. I would say the kills were gory. They were very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I just hated the setting. I'm like, okay, you're in a town, bro. Like, Leatherface has always been at a house. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's always been in a farmhouse, middle of nowhere. You know, the diabolical shit you start to uncover with this family. Yeah, I was definitely confused for quite a bit of the Yeah, movie. and then they had like a post credit scene where like he goes back to the house. I'm like, you act like you're going to get a fucking sequel, dude. Come on. <laughs> uh, you're not getting a sequel. You should have just had the house from the beginning. This movie would have been a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, and you know me, I'm very excited for, for you know, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre Maze. I've yeah. never been through our house. I've never been through one, so that's exciting for me. Yeah, and I, you know, they're pulling a lot of characters, not just, you know, a d bunch of different looks from Leatherface over the years, which is going to be really cool because there's a lot of different iconic looks that I think he has and you know that they've done over the years that I, I've been wanting to see in person in a maze like that so that's going to be really cool not to mention they're pulling from other movies like Chop Top's going to be in it you know Chop Top's a fan favorite The Hitchhiker is going to be in it from the first film um, and, and as well as I think it was like the uncle or something he's going to be in it you know all these characters are going to be in it so like the entire multiverse of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre world is coming to life and what better way to do that when the multiverse right now itself and anything is is hot. Obviously, it's more known in DC, Marvel doing it, but like, you know, everything, everywhere, all at once, that's a multiverse hey, we're movie. we're not mad about it, right? We're not one bit. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, not to mention, they also uh, talked a little bit more about Universal Monsters, uh, Eternal Bloodlines, which is going to be the first female, all-female um, Universal Monsters maze. Looking forward to that. Luchadors, Monsteros, Scare Zone. I'm looking forward to it. Wrestling's hot right now. That's all I have to say. Yeah. They, I they, mean, we're trying to get out to WrestleMania. Yeah. 20, 41. 42? 41. 41? No. So, yeah. Yeah. Wrestling's hot right now, and I think this is a good time for them to do this uh, scare zone. And I want to see what creatures are going to be wearing these masks. Yeah. I mean, you got you got something of, like, Frankenstein lookalikes, creature lookalikes. I'm like, you know what? I'll take it. This is the closest we're getting to the creature from the Black Lagoon being at Halloween Horror Nights. I'll fucking take it. At least for now. For now, hopefully. And I hope one day we do get it. No, we got but... Epic Universe coming out and that's yes. going to be opening up. So, let, I mean, we can only imagine that they would do some extra stuff for Halloween, right? I hope so. That'd be really cool. <laughs> Not to mention they still I mean, have they a lot more. Have the entire themed land. I mean, listen, <laughs> we also know that there's still a little bit of land in the back that has room to maybe fit a lagoon i'm just yeah. saying we got a future dark ride right there potentially bring uh, back a submarine ride yeah a submarine ride with the creature from the lag lagoon how fun would that fucking be dude i'd love it um anyway though i think horror nights is gonna be <laughs> i think it's gonna be great this year i honestly do there's the, there's a lot of things that i'm like okay i've seen insidious i've seen texas chainsaw massacre so many times you know i've seen a couple of things not too stoked about ghostbusters frozen empire but i am excited to see what the ghosts look like um this is one that i was telling you about in 2019 was a good one and you haven't seen a ghostbusters made so i, I know your, your excitement's a little bit more than me for that a uh, hi ria she's gonna come fight. i am excited but i am ex and am also not all that much excited i'll be honest for right. hhn just because we already kind of know how it goes you yeah. know what i mean like this is kind of the the one that i express to a lot of people that you know hey if you want to go and like be able to figure a haunt out 
you know, and be scared, but not that scared. Oh my God, HHN. Um, I always say but, if you want to live the, in the movies. Yeah, you go to HHN. live in the movies also, but you know what I mean about the triggers. Yeah. Like, they become, yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Um, and then for the, the prices, it's like, you know. It's just the crowds for me, really, at this point. The price and the crowd for me. Yeah, the prices are spiking every year. Because price and crowd go hand in hand for me. Because if you're going to spend a bunch of money and you're going and there's going to be a bunch of people there, then I'm kind of like, what's the point in spending all this money? But if you're going to spend a bunch of money and then there's going to be very few people there, then that kind of equals out for me, maybe maybe a little bit. Because, but they yeah. seem to not have found that quite balanced there i don't know if hopefully it'll get better this spiking year up prices to try to control the crowds of coming to hhn but, I'm but it's not like, going to no yeah there's just so many fans of this and event credit now. And, you know yeah there's just so many fans of this event now that like i think people are going to pay what they pay regardless just to go to the event you yeah. know what i mean just to be a part of i think halloween horror nights has become so involved with pop culture now that like that's why it, it's the longest panel at the fucking weekend. That's why it's selling out nights left and right. You know, yeah. like I got no disrespect for that. I'm just saying, like, I, I wish that some people would open their eyes more to like other haunts because there's other such other great haunts that put in so much work and dedication to what they try to build and bring to life that like a horn is just overshadowing it. You know what I mean? It's Definitely. like. I, I like I said, Horror Nights, I love it. I've been going since 2011. I'm never going to stop going. It's it's part of my yearly thing. I love Halloween Horror Nights, man. If it wasn't for Horror Nights, I don't think I'd be back into the... I don't think I'd have as much love for the haunt world as I do today. Right. I owe Horror Nights. Don't get me wrong. Day. You know, I do very much enjoy it when we go. Yeah. It's just, at this point, I'm just like, there's so many people. There's so yeah. much, you know, and it's sadly very repetitive, so... At this point, I'm like, I'm happy when we go once, twice a year. <laughs> yeah, we do. We Instead usually, of, you know, I know the first yeah. year that we got together, we got like a pass and the we went year. like seven, eight times. So and I think we only did that because it was the first haunt to open. Yeah. And we just were like, we just want to go somewhere. Definitely. We just want to see some haunt spooky shit, you know? Yeah. But I mean, as soon as the day would go on, we would only do like one, two things. And then we would usually leave just because it was so overwhelming with the crowd yeah, so in, in that case is it was that year it happened to be raining and hot at the same time yeah. so that would be another factor of things but like go, I said, hopefully they could figure out a balance yeah hopefully uh we'll see what's up this year though i'm looking forward to it hopefully yeah. they can uh pull out the stops this year and they'll see what they got all right definitely hoping that we can go and enjoy our time and get a donut yeah donuts are good donuts are really good we like the donuts Zoe Reborn. So we have another haunt to talk about. What's the other haunt? Six Flags. Did we not talk about? I thought we talked about Six. You Flags. like kind of touched on it, but I didn't talk about it. Six I'm Flags. I'm very excited for Six Flags. Fright Fest Extreme. You know, eleven mazes. That's 11 like mazes. that's kind of mind blowing. It's it a is. little scary, also. Yeah. Because, but yeah. they had a merger, so hopefully. Hopefully. That because you know knots kind of brings the fire, so yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that they didn't really affect Knots with that merger. Knots is still going strong. They're doing what they're doing. Yeah. I know that haunt generates a lot of money for them, so that's good. Uh, Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme is what they're calling it this year. And they're promising 11 mazes, five IPs, six originals. Uh, all your favorite originals are coming back, including, of course, Vault 666, Condemned, uh, Truth or Dare, Willoughby's uh, House, uh, I think Sewer of Souls, and then a brand new ad, uh, edition of Aftermath, which is the third one now. I feel like there's some of these that I haven't been through. I uh, you may have not. Uh, well, yeah, those ones you should. Truth or Dare, maybe. Truth or Dare was different when we went through it. It wasn't okay. complete, like finished yet. Um, however, uh, I want to switch gears back to Aftermath, the third edition of it, because. Uh, a YouTuber who uh, was a huge influence of me starting up Nights of Horror. And uh, now I, I'm thankful to call a good friend of mine. Uh, Brian Arsic is announced to be doing this maze. And um, I got to talk with him over the weekend at Midsummer Scream. I ran into him. 
um and we were talking a little bit but you know he's he's a good guy and uh, i'm excited to see that uh, i know he was doing some stuff over at universal studios for a little bit uh got some experience there killed it over there now he's coming over to six flags and working with creative over here at six flags so uh, I'm excited to see what he does with that aftermath maze. I think he wrote oh, that yeah. entire treatment. Uh, I'm excited to see what that what that's like br brought to life. Um, yeah, super very, exciting. Very proud of him. I know he's shooting short films now, and he's uh, you know, he's got. I think he did some midsummer scream coverage, but um, yeah, he's still he's still doing it out there little by little. So I'm I'm very proud of him to see where he's come in his career, but. Let's talk about some of these IPs, man. You got Stranger Things coming to the event, which we've seen many times at Halloween yes. Horror Nights, and they've. And we already know what scene we want. Yeah, there's. I mean, I, I I've said it many and times. What if, else is the uh, thing about Stranger Things? Well, um, it says it's going to be obviously some of the best moments of season four. The facade, it's looking like it's somewhere in a warehouse, but they're making it and skinning it to look like the uh, gym for Hawkins High. Okay. So that looked pretty cool. So um, are we going back to the dance or? No. So or um, are we, where are we? Well, because remember in, in season four, the way that yeah, starts. Yeah, they go and hide out there. No, well, no, they, uh, they, you know, they had the, the pep rally. The basketball game, Lucas is the basketball team, so like oh, yeah. we're probably gonna start there, maybe. Um, but I've said it before, and I'll say it again many times on this channel already. If you want to win the fans over, the entire maze can be shit. But if you want to win the fans over, you put the Eddie Munson and Master of Puppets scene in that maze. Yep, that's how you win. Honestly, that's how you beat Horror Nights. That's the only way. I, if if the entire maze is crap, but then I see that maze and it's execute or that part of the maze and it's executed so well. I, I'm going to forget about anything I just saw in the maze and just remember that one moment. And I'm going to be like, this is why this was the best Stranger Things maze of all time. Yep. It would so, be super hype. Yeah, 100%. Master Puppets, it was a great scene when it came yeah, out. Eddie will enjoy their moment. Yeah. Uh, Eddie was a very relatable character for <clears> a lot of people in the haunt community and the horror community. Um, and just life. So, good for him. And he's now Doing making very a name well. for himself. Yeah, he was just <laughs> in Quiet Place Day 1. He's going to be in Fantastic Four and Gladiator 2. This guy's doing a lot yeah. of work now. It's popping up everywhere. He is. So that's going to be cool. Stranger Things looks promising. Um, then we got Army of the Dead. Very um, excited. Yeah, excited for that one. Especially where it's going, where I we, we suggested yeah. it from the start, whereas where the old Aftermath 2 location was. And uh, it's just perfect. I mean, all you have to do is put a little, little Vegas touch to it. You got yourselves a maze there, man. And I'm super excited to see what they do with Army of the Dead. Um, Aftermath 2, in my opinion, I think is one of their biggest maze locations because it used to be the old Batman stunt show. So they have a lot of those big sets already. And I believe that was the one we went through, right? Yeah, we did Aftermath 2. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. I had, the, the giant I, I liked door. it, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I think that's perfect for Army of the Dead. I couldn't agree with and anymore. You can put the fucking decayed Vegas sign. The jailhouse can now be the vault, the casino where we're going to get the vault. And then after we break into the vault, that's when all hell breaks loose and the last half of the maze is all hell breaking loose. Yeah, and I can't wait to see if they do any like little stunts in there. Since you did say it was a stunt area before, maybe yeah. they could do some bungee stuff. It'll be fun. We'll see. The queen and the king of, of, of Vegas yeah. with the zombies. She was pregnant, so I mean, pretty sure we'll see like a, a, a version of that maybe. I mean, that was a very interesting movie, but it was a very fun movie. Yeah, it was. It was. Batista was great in it. I'm hoping Batista shows up. <laughs> Like Dave, buddy, Batista bomb, me, please. <laughs> um, no, but it's, it, I, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Should be cool to see that. Zack Snyder going back to his roots. Look at loving it. Um, what else is coming? Let's see. Hold on. Let me rethink about this again. There's trick or treat, correct? There's trick or treat coming. Michael Doherty was actually at the panel for Midsummer Scream, the director and, and writer of Trick or Treat and Krampus. Um, and what are and, they going to be doing with Trick or Treat? So they're going to be doing a lot with Trick or Treat. Um, so not only are you going to see, of course, some of the most iconic scenes for the film, they are going to be going to the expanded universe and the lore of the comic book that they did. So there was times in the comic book where you saw Sam in like the Western times, but he's doing the same exact thing. Oh, wow. So now you're kind of seeing Sam's been around for a lot longer than we think. You're going to go see, uh, they, they promised you're going to go into Sam's lair finally to see what that looks like. 
So you'll, you'll see what he looks like, and you're just going to see him in all these different time periods and stuff, on top of seeing, of course, some of the most iconic scenes from that film. Um, but there's a lot of expanded lore that it's making me now want to go out and buy the comic book series or the graphic novel if they have one and just read it all just to see what that's about. I'm kind of um, on the same page. Yeah, just to get a little idea and to be ahead of the curve as to what I'm going to be walking through. And I'm excited to see Sam's hideout, though. I mean... I think for years, everybody's wondered where this guy goes and hides and hibernates for a whole season. Because <laughs> uh, I'm imagining after Halloween ends, he's just back in back in hiding, plotting his next Halloween. We love Sam. But yeah, that was a good panel. And, and Michael Doherty said he wants to try to go to every Six Flags that is hosting a trick-or-treat maze and scare in one, scaring it for one night. Oh, wow. So I'm hoping we get to run into him. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be really cool. Very much love that guy. I think the funny, funniest part about that panel was there was a guy in the audience sitting as Michael Myers and he kept going oh, on. I heard about that. He kept, he kept just staring at him in Michael Myers' character and he's like, I'm so freaked out because Michael Myers is just staring <laughs> at me. I'm like, yeah, he does that. Um, So there's that. Uh, The Conjuring Universe is coming. Oh, yeah, that's right. So this is where I think it was a little bit of an overkill. All nine movies in the Conjuring universe are going to be featured in that. Maze. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, in my head, I'm already thinking that's only like a room, a movie. <laughs> that's yeah. nine rooms already. Maybe they're conceptualizing this way differently than we think. I think so. Rob's idea was maybe they are going to put like all the Annabelle's in one couple rooms, you know, and then all the nun movies in another room. You know what I mean? There's cause there's multiple of each one. All the Conjuring films can be its own thing. You know, I mean, maybe we're going to see that just all these famous demons just pop out of everywhere in some of the most iconic scenes. I don't know. There's a lot of ways to go about hope. this. Yeah, there, there are a lot of ways. Because what I immediately thought was the um, the artifacts room. Yeah, I think that's going to be the start of it. You know, so. That's how you're going to enter. You're going to see all that stuff. And I think that's what's going to kick off of all these demons. Maybe it's going to be an original concept. Yeah. That'd be really cool. You know, and then just maybe Easter egg all the iconic scenes of when these characters showed up. Who knows? That should be a lot of fun. I mean, we're big fans of the Conjuring universe. They're working on the fourth and final film for the Warrens. Um, and I think they're working on a TV show as well. So, wow. Yeah, a lot of things in the Conjuring universe coming soon. So we'll see what happens. And then the final IP, uh, because Texas Chainsaw Massacre got scrapped. Uh, Saw, 20th anniversary edition, 20 years since the original film came out. 11 films later, and working on number 12, because I'm <laughs> counting Jigsaw. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, and Jigsaw in, I guess, 12 films total, even, uh, what was the other one? Spiral. Okay. That was still in the Saw universe, you know? Yeah. So, 13, going on 13 films later, uh, mm -hmm. and Saw, Saw is still going strong. Tobin Bell still featured in every single Saw movie, uh, whether it's a voice, image, or him he's himself. In there. Yeah, he's in there. He is Saw. There's no one else that can replace that. He is Saw. They even figured out a way to bring his ass back for Saw 10 and 11. So, I'm curious to see where 11 goes now. Um, Saw 10 was a lot of fun. So I'm excited to see 20 years of Saw. They're, they're, they're talking some of the most infamous traps of all the Saw franchise. Nice. You know, so we're talking all the way up to Saw 10. Because um, Saw 11, I believe, is due out next year. Okay. So, uh, you know, what a good hype for that. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. You know me, I'm a big, big Saw fan. Yeah, so. we, uh, we, we, I remember we, before Saw 10 came out, we, we did a binge watch of, of all the Saw films. Um, did a little Saw marathon. Yep. A lot of fun. And the Lionsgate maze was really cool to yes. walk through at Midsummer. They so. did a little 20th anniversary uh, homage to Saw. You know, we got to see the bathroom scene, the most iconic scene. Before that, you got to see a workbench of all his famous traps. So uh, it was really cool. A little prattle action with yeah. the uh, the pig monster. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and of course, Billy the puppet, not only in the maze, but outside in the facade of the maze, representing yes. Lionsgate as a whole. It was, was a beautiful wonderful. little walkthrough. It was good. They did a very good job. Shout out Plague Productions, cookbook classic. We love the cookbook. And he was walking around right there. Yeah, his booth Scary was right around the corner. Scary Cat talked to him. Yep. yep. We his, did not. We did not. Um, <laughs> we're not cool like that. We're not. And I'm. It's okay. He, he's a very, uh, I know he's not, he's a very nice guy, but he's very intimidating to me because of how much I look up to him. But, um, you know, we'll get there one day. Yeah. We'll do a podcast, hopefully. I can sit down with him one day when he slows down a little bit and be like, hey, I've been waiting to do this one for a long time, buddy. Uh, I got to get Sammy on that one for sure. Maybe uh, next year I can uh, 
find him again and do like some clown questions or something. Yeah. Midsummer Scream. I think he'd like question that. Edition. He would like that a lot. All right. Now we can talk about Zoe. Yes. Zoe Reborn. Uh, so much fun. So much fun. So <laughs> the story of how this became... Don't be mad at me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the story how this became a uh, reality was uh, for a few months now, I've been trying to get in contact with Christina and set up an interview, a podcast. I really liked the fact that she essentially brought Haunt year round with this escape room. Yes. Um, because it is not only an escape room, but it is kind of like a maze and a haunt experience, an extreme haunt. Yeah. It's and, nice and spooky. Yeah, live actors and everything. Um, so I finally got through to her uh, last month. She was on. She was just getting on vacation, and we. I told her I was like, "When you get back, let me know. We'll set something up." She finally got back. Midsummer scream happened. We were gonna do it that week, but I was like, "I'm kind of preparing for this week, so can we wait till next week?" So we got through Midsummer Scream. We got through the next week. Tuesday came around. Monday night came around. And she asked me if I would like to also play Zoe. Uh, free of charge. They were very nice to comp us a game to check it out. Uh, that was very cool of them to do that. So I immediately texted you first. Uh, I said, hey, I got this invite to play this extreme horror escape room. Uh, this one I told you about. I'm like, you down to do it. Immediately, she's like, I'll make everything work. I'll get off work. Like, I'll make it work. I'll get down there. I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, she said I can invite some friends. Uh, I don't think I know anyone right off the bat that would want to come do this, especially it being an extreme escape room that really eliminates a lot for a lot of people. So my girlfriend being my girlfriend, she goes to work the next day or she texts her coworkers who have, uh, mind you, never ever in their life have done not only an escape room, but an extreme haunt at that. Yeah. Uh, so they don't, I don't think they knew what they were getting into. No one knew what they were really getting into. I told her, like, what a regular escape room is. I was like, I have no idea what we're getting ourselves into as far as extreme escape rooms. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that was a fun part for all of us. And I think I could say this by the end, everyone had a great time. Yeah. I was very excited. Yeah. After talking to Karen, um, at, you know, on our lunch breaks and stuff like that, she very much had a great time. Yeah. Edgar had a, a terrifying. Ball. Yeah, he he was terrified, but yeah, he had. Well, maybe he wasn't terrified. I can't speak for Edgar, but yeah, he was. He definitely seemed scared in some of those moments. Uh, but yeah. at the end, he was happy that they went and did the experience. Yeah. So and, uh, yeah, she's eager to go back. We're eager. I'm Do eager to go one. back. The adrenaline rush um, is, what is what it is. We're just a little worrisome that, you know, hey, we're going back a second time. They're really going to mess with us this time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, for all. Now, uh, I get there before them about yes. two, three hours before they do so we can record the podcast. Podcast is out on the channel now or on Spotify, wherever you can listen to the podcast. Check it out to see uh, her mind behind making this one, all the other escape rooms and her her brief. We get into a little bit with her history of Not Scary Farm as well. Um, but so we go get there, we do the podcast. It's great. It goes good. Um, and, you know, we're just chat we're chatting away. Uh, finally, uh, I know uh, I'm waiting for Hayes and Edgar and um, Karen mm -hmm. to show up and they get there. I meet out with them, and uh, we all get together. And then we all meet up in the front of Zoe. We meet our game master, who was Nico. Yep. Nico was a good guy. Nico took care of us. Nico uh, gave us a very good experience. Sometimes we were ahead of Nico since, but uh, we got through it. <laughs> Nico helped us a lot. We appreciate Nico. Um, and Nico gave, gave, uh, got us started up. I think the most intimidating thing for me walking in was the board that said tap outs this month. Now, we were at the end of the month, so this number was reasonably high for the month being at the end. So when we walked in, I think before, they didn't update it, but it, it reached 67. Because I remember when we were waiting, she's like, I just had to deal with the tap out. So I luckily, I, I was not added to that board. And I, that's what I kept saying, that I was going to be 67 or I was going to be another number. Um, we so got you through it. We got through it, yeah. And the scary part was in the beginning of the escape room, you know, you're in the lobby, you're kind of in front of this house and you get blindfolded and one by one, they take us into a fucking room, right? 
but they take us out of order. No matter what order you line up in, they're going to just take you out of order and sit you in a room. Yeah, they are going to do what they want. Yeah, exactly. So you get in the game master. He it kind of explains what's going on when you could take off your blindfold. He tells you that he's going to leave the walkie talkie somewhere and you got to find it. Um, while that's all going on, while the audio features going on, um, I don't know how you guys, all, you know, we probably had a bunch of different experiences, but I had, um, I believe it was Matt kind of touching my head and he got in close and he kind of smelled good. So I, <laughs> I commented that he smelled good. Um, but, uh, yeah, my also goal for this escape room is because I had a feeling I was going to know the people that was going to be part of this experience. So my other goal in this escape room was to try to break them. I don't know if I accomplished that because there was times where we came in and, and, you know, like they were really in character, but there yeah. could have been backstage laughing their asses off. I hope they did. That was my goal. I like to break people. Yeah. I like to see how good they could stick into character and they did a very good job. So, uh, our first somebody room. somebody act like they were slitting my throat, I think. Oh, okay. So that you got, cool, yeah, you got a different experience than I did. I wonder what, yeah. uh, Edgar and Karen got, but, uh. Uh, I don't think Karen said she, I'm not quite sure. I think she said that she didn't really get messed with in that first room though. So let's get into our next room, which was our main dining room, which was, that's where I think the experience really starts to pick up in the best way possible. Dining room looks great. I think the interior design of this, uh, entire escape room was great. Uh, they did a very good job bringing this house to life. Special effects are amazing. Puzzles are fun. Um, we had to get under a table and uh i think yeah. the funniest part about that what you see in the reaction uh video the funniest part about that is i don't think edgar knew what was going on and no. he was like we're all under the table already and edgar's like still by the corner and he, we're like edgar you gotta get under the table bro <laughs> yeah. or they're gonna get you uh and of course they come charging out both zoe and the uh the dad come charging out uh making the noise and then they all they drag us all out and yeah. it was uh it was definitely terrifying for me <laughs> i didn't know how that was gonna work in my case because i'm a big guy i'm six yeah. foot six uh, i'm two two sixty ish and uh you know i was like i'm curious to see how this is gonna work i mean these guys got they got muscle they matt pulled nice me out no problem. Floors, yeah yeah matt pulled me out no problem uh i know sage pulled you out yeah you, you had a ball doing that yeah I it mean, was a fair bit of fun. Yeah, you had a good time with that one. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we go into uh, we go into Zoe's room. I think that was a really cool experience. That's where, like, we kept getting. I think that's where we got started getting fucked with even more and more. Yeah, with the flat, with the little light. Yeah, just the areas that Zoe was popping out of, and <laughs> I was just like, "God damn, dude!" Like, yeah, and then yeah, there there was a part where I kind of went and hit on you, and you're like, "Babe." <laughs> I remember that so vividly because it was so funny. <laughs> but no, I was just like, I, I, I remember like, especially there was one part where I, I went near the bed and like she reached out her house like, no, 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 no. You can see that on the camera, on the react cam as well. But God, they were evil in that room. That was, I think, like, uh, that was one of the most evil times they were in the room. Because I, like, I didn't get it that bad because I was uh, like paying attention to to the, the objective of that room. Yeah, you were really yeah. like, and, and, but I was like, <laughs> I was getting shocked in that fucking I was room. In the zone. Again, okay, so the, the shock portion, that, that I think that's what scared me the most. Yeah, you definitely did not like those shocks. No, yeah, but it, I will say this, like, I think they do a good job where it, it's not as bad as you think. I think people think it's going to be a fucking taser gun. It's not. It's like yeah. a little pen. It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a light sting and it hurts for a little bit, but it, it's fine. Like I got, I got shocked like three or four times. Yeah. It wasn't fun, but I wasn't like, <laughs> Oh my God, I gotta quit. Like yeah. it was, it was like, yeah, it hurt, but it's, it made the experience all the better. I think it jumpstart my heart for sure. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Give me that adrenaline rush. But, um, no, the best part I think was when we're in Zoe's room and I'm shouting down the hallway. Yeah, that was that was great. <laughs> it's because like they didn't. So I I think they didn't put that in the react thing because that is part of a puzzle of something where you have to communicate with someone down the hallway. Um, and I'm yelling because like there was earlier people like running past us and shit and that. And I'm like, nope, I'm good. 
uh, and I'm yelling down the hallway. Yeah, like the top of your lungs. <laughs> yeah, I'm like just trying to give, you know, um, Karen some instructions <laughs> and stuff. And oh my God, I was just so, I was, I was yelling at like an idiot, bro. I was, it was, it was, it was funny. It was funny. So, um, I was dying. Yeah, it was it was one of those things where I was just kind of. If they would have came in right then and there and told us to run, I, I would have struggled. Yeah, because there was times where I remember, um, you know, that we were going through it and like I was trying to freaking run. And then I knew that you were like just enjoying it or doing like a like a funny run. And I was like, OK, I'm trying to survive here, babe. And you're going to get us killed. And I'm going to be the one that gets shocked. But, uh, so we run down the hallway. We get to this other room. It's, it's another I'm puzzle. A lot of fun. And, uh, we reconnect with our friends. And, um, this was the moment when, uh, Edgar got snatched away and, and got put into a body bag. For the first time. For the yeah. first time. Yeah. Edgar got snatched away. I think for me, the objective of the game uh, up until the very end was to, uh, kind of sacrifice everyone so I didn't have to go do stuff by myself. <laughs> And it kind of worked out up until the very end where Karma came and bought, you know, bit, bit me yeah. in the ass. And I think that everybody just realized I was way too eager. Yeah. The, the Hayes was down to do everything. Like she'll, she'll go by herself. She did like the first like alone experience where like she had to go back into a room in the pitch black and she had no that problem. That was doing so, it. so fun. Yeah. She had no I problem. Literally, I literally, I walked in, closed the door and your friend just like slid right in front of me. I was like, in my head, I'm all, oh, hi, Slider. Hi, Slider. <laughs> yeah. There was just so I'll much just fun. Just find the table. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> I ended up having to put my hand down a sink and that scared the fuck out of me. I was so sad that I couldn't reach. I tried to have Hayes do it. Like, that's who I was like, babe, do it. And then no, like couldn't reach. I, I was reading, you know, a thing that's going on and it tells you to put your hand in the sink. And I was so eager to do it. Like, I was already ready to do it before you even came over there. And yeah. then I was like, hey, look. And, like, because I wanted to give people the opportunity to do stuff because I felt like I was just yeah. like... Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> no, it's not like that for me, at least. I'm like, you all do everything. So, I'll help you. So, yeah, he stops me from putting his, to putting my hand in. I'm like, no, but we have to. So, yeah. I, I go to try to do it and I'm just too short. So, <laughs> so I was like, you're going to have to do this. Yeah, I was not looking forward to that because I but watched What it. upset me the most was that I was like, no, I left my bag in, in the beginning because I had a finger in my bag and it would have been hilarious to see that on camera. Uh, just like, oh, wait, no, wait, wait, I got a finger <laughs> and just drop it like, in the sink. The <laughs> What's that part of? the experience i'd be like oh, i just found it i'd be a real finger yeah, um, it would have been great right yeah it would have been hilarious <laughs> and then obviously uh going into our last couple of rooms i mean there was some crawling yes. there was some darkness lots of crawling yeah and then i i think what was the greatest thing was the finale um i was uh we were we were getting we were doing what we needed to do finishing up our puzzle and you have to, there's a scene where you have to go all the way back to the beginning. And they, and they, they happened to just single out me over the radio. And I kind of like, not going to lie. No, I was getting ready to do it. And I think they knew. They knew. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> no, this guy hasn't done anything. This is who we want to do the finale. I'm like, fuck. I ain't going to lie. There was a time where I was in the corner right next to the, where I got to go back to crawl under. And I looked up at the camera and I almost threw up an X. I, I'm not going to lie. I almost did. But I was like, fuck it. Let's see what this is about. Yeah, we were at the end. Oh, my God. I don't think, you know, you, your senses mean more than anything to you in the time of need. But when they're blocked out and you can barely see anything, it is the most. And all you can hear is the music. All you can hear is music <laughs> that's like fucking like. So and then, loud. Like, it, it's just like, oh, my God. And then people are popping out left and right. And it's just like. But luckily, Matt gave me a hell of a monologue at the end because yeah. that was such a good monologue. And then I had to do—I had to run all the way back. Um, I think what was also kind of, kind of terrifying me is knowing that the building was actually haunted. Um, yeah, that was really fun to, to hang out afterward and and get to see that footage and yeah, and and that was cool yeah. afterward. Um, so all in all, it was a great game. Afterward, they were nice enough to give us a lights on tour of the entire game. And yeah, that was really nice of them. Yeah, to see everything with lights on and give us some kind of stories that have happened behind the scenes or like off hours and stuff with like it being haunted. I think that's a lot of fun. They've made that very vocal lately that they've actually caught a full manifestation walking through walls. Yeah. 
you know, and they've put that on their TikTok and everything. So I think that was cool to get that behind the scenes and to kind of get more of an in-depth look of how the effects are triggered and, you know, how things are triggered and, and how they go about getting places fast enough and everything. It was really cool. On top of that, I, I was very gracious because the fact that they hooked it up with the free game, I thought we yeah, should that was tip super them. nice of them. Yeah. And I, and I thought I was like, the very, very least I can do is tip them really good. So I, I, I tipped a total of $75 for the three of them. It was 25 each Yeah, on behalf of all of us, you know, like I, that's the least I can do for them, you know, taking the time out of their days and, and putting on a really good show. Um, a hundred percent recommend it, especially if you're getting started into the world oh, yeah. of it's the extreme so haunt fun. world. Yeah. This I've is been like telling a, all my coworkers about it. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> think I'm crazy for doing it um but you know i don't think i'm crazy because i had a great time doing it i've been telling all my coworkers. i've uh stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit uh to do this kind of thing uh and i'm very glad i got the opportunity to do it and um so yeah it was a lot of fun yeah i think i was telling I can't you wait for the next pinocchio. ones that they do yeah pinocchio yeah. and rock band and... rock band in the uh, innovation room yeah or invention room um, but I mean, two of those are not extreme. So yeah, they're so just. They do offer some family friendly yeah. ones. The rock band just. Uh, and Pinocchio, be, uh, I believe you said, is going to be two different versions. Yes. Yeah, extreme so, and non extreme. So yeah. So they'll be touching, no touching. So yeah. if you want to do it with live actors that don't touch, but they do put some pressure on you, there's that option. If you want to do the extreme version where they touch you and stuff, there's that option as well. Um, a lot of stuff this haunt season that we're looking forward to. And I think Zoe uh, was another great way to get us more hype for haunt season. Definitely. Um, very thankful and for the opportunity for them to invite us out, um, shoot the show and then give us an amazing experience um, as well as hopefully uh, in the future, a continued partnership with them uh, where we can come back to another show. Uh, I'd like to interview some of the actors that were involved with Zoe. Um, and get their experiences on what it's like transitioning from scaring at knots to scaring at Zoe. Yeah. Uh, that's something that we're looking into doing, hopefully, uh, do another podcast when Pinocchio comes out. Uh, and if, if the stars align, can I'll do a ghost hunt there. Cause, uh, yeah, Edgar was very, uh, intrigued with that. Ha- happy that, yeah, we got to do that. Yeah. So maybe do an actual ghost hunt if they let us after hours. That'd be a lot of fun. But, uh, Great time. Looking forward to haunt season. Yeah. What are you, uh, what are you most excited for? And uh... Well, obviously Dark Harbor. You know, that used to be my happy place eight times in one season. And, you know, so excited for that to be coming back. Oh, yeah. Um, can't wait to see not only the mazes, but the merch, the actors, who's coming back, who's not coming back. You know, there's a lot of people that only scared there at the queen you know uh we even seen them there during shacktoberfest you know just true loyal queen monsters yep so always happy to see them again uh the fire performers you know the performances were the second to none yeah you know they fire shows coming back yeah that's gonna let's, be fun let's see if uh the, the ma- magic the magician william draven maybe he'll come the drum, back the drummers yes the, yeah, uh the, t7 and his boys his boys they're yeah, coming the back voodoo, voodoo stomp voodoo, voodoo stomp i believe voodoo yeah. stomp yes yeah. that sounds right <laughs> uh, they debuted the boys and him uh at Chateau Chateau Fest. yeah now they're carrying it over the legacy of dark harbor he was super excited for that and they're super excited for him to carry on that legacy with his boys yeah it's always really fun to watch them walk around and yeah they have a good time them around a little yeah. family time you know what i mean exactly and they get paid for it that's awesome yeah let's see who else winds up coming back to the queen should be fun queen mary's gonna be a fun one this year yep. I, I think i'm very on board with that hype and then yeah. the second i'm very you know speculative but also excited to see how well six flags is gonna do with- yeah 11 mazes 11 mazes <laughs> and you know of course knott's berry farm always excited for that we yeah. bought the season pass so anytime we're feeling a little haunt homesick we can head over there hopefully they'll be doing maybe a few extra days and or if i'm working nights and i need some b-roll real quick go over yeah. there for like an hour, hour and i'm gonna try to go as much as possible yeah. you know unfortunately i am working days right now but i do love my my new job so i can try to go on a friday too upset with me (laughs) for real i know so that's the hard part about trying to take days off and luckily they've been very uh 
very good to me so far. So Yeah, so understand, we're going to try to make it up to as many haunts as we can, as many media nights as we can, if we get invited out, as many opening nights as we can. Uh, it's just the hassle of me and Hayes work two different schedules. I work nights, she works days, and... But hopefully you'll get one of us. Hopefully you'll see one of us there. Or maybe the Howling Hour. Or maybe <laughs> Rob. I know Rob's always down, but uh, yeah, guys, it's going to be a great haunt season. We're going to cover a lot this season, so follow us on all of our socials, uh, Hayes Even Mayor home socials. Haunts, hit us up. Home haunts, yeah. Um, there was one year, the COVID year, I wound up going to like 10 home haunts or something like that. Yeah, it was all there was. Where are all the home haunts at now? They're here. We just, uh, now all the other haunts are big. And so now the spotlight has shifted, but in our hearts, the home haunts are always going to be the. Yeah. We got to start doing like a one home haunt and then heading to knots or something. Yeah. The only, it's, I think the, the issue with home haunts is the scheduling. Usually they only always do like Halloween weekend or like the last two weekends. So it's like trying to go from city to city Yeah, to try to find the experience. That's very true. Again, gas and traffic. Yep, unfortunately. So we'll do what we can. We're going to try to get as much as much as we can. Uh, but you can follow us on all of our socials, TikTok and YouTube, all that stuff. And uh, to keep up to date as to what we are doing. Uh, Check what, out the TikToks. The TikToks, yes. By, by Hayes, for sure. Uh, that you're going to start seeing on Nights of Horror. And then go follow her on her page as well, where she's been doing a lot of TikToks a day. And there should be a Nights of Horror surprise coming out in the short to near future that anthony is not completely aware of yet but yeah if only you could see my face right now i'm so confused but yeah we'll, we'll look <laughs> forward to that soon all righty um until then we will talk to you guys very soon go be creative go be creative and uh stay spooky